little preface before I welcome you guys. You are about to do terrible things to windows. Good terrible things that make it pretty. But, terrible things nonetheless. If you do not make a system restore and you make a comment about, my windows is broken. There is a wonderful video I made about how to make a system restore point. Go watch that. Well, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everybody. Depending on what side of the world or what side of the universe you're on. Today we're going to talk about those custom themes that everybody's clamoring about. Like, what theme are you using? Oh my god. As already a lot of people mentioned already, it's placebo. The link will be in the descripty at the bottom of the video. It's a nice theme. It's probably the cleanest one. The least amount of gradients, the least amount of macifying, the least amount of Web 2.0 bullshit. So we're going to talk about some theme stuff today. I'm going to start off with uh, utilities. Yes, I know I've said in the past that using utilities is kind of killing the point of learning. But I will explain to you why I'm using these utilities. Because there's a lot of work involved in actually not using the utilities and that's how it was for Windows XP. Alright. We launch some utilities. Now we're gonna talk about these quote unquote evil utilities. Which uh it's kind of funny because back in the day there was no utilities. You had to do it by hand. Now, the old way of using it, it still works. I it patch my theme files just for the sake of the sake of doing it because it's paranoia. You know, there's evil wizards and ninjas living in my windows. That's not the way I see it. I mean, going through some of these files with a handy utility called Resource Hacker, which I'll give a link in the description for that one, which is a tool we'll use. But it's like going through these DLLs that I'll be talking about. It's just ridiculous how much stuff still exists from XP and even Vista, still in 7. Like, for example, we're talking about the AuthUI DLL in the last video for customizing that Windows logon screen. Yeah, you still have Vista and XP files in there, which, they're not huge, but it's like, what are you doing, Microsoft? Not going to make new files, you're just going to shove, shove things continuously into other things. It's like, uh... Having a Betamax adapter for a VCR for a DVD player, which doesn't make sense. But yeah, on to everything else. Universal Theme Patch. We're going to open this up just to show you. Even though I already have it installed, just want to show it. You know, it's going to tell you it's going to patch these files, it's going to touch them. Yes. Now you can see on mine, they're already patched. Now, the reason I use a utility for these things is because these three things, you would have to go in there and actually hex edit. Yes, you have to manually edit with a hex editor, which is a pain in the ass. And finding the information how to do it nowadays is almost non-existent because half the websites are down or gone because they're on servers that no longer exist. Like Alta Vista, or GeoCities, or Fortune City. Death and fire to all of them. But yeah, as you can see, already patched. Now that will let you have unsigned themes. Now the new way to do it is a little program called UX Style Core. Now you gotta make sure to run this as an admin. As you can see, I don't have an admin option because I am an admin. Magic. I'm gonna double click this guy. It's gonna tell I already have installed, but it's pretty much you run it, installs a service, which I will show you. I'll just do Windows Run and type in services.msc. Now I'm gonna embiggen the window. Now I'm going to do control plus so you can see everything. Now when you scroll all the way down to you, you will see an unsigned theme service running. This enables the use of unsigned themes just like the description says. That's all that UX style does and it basically tricks windows and lets you use any theme you feel like that you can get off of DVNR. You know the, all the pink ones you want because I know all of you guys on Raise the World love pink and bananas and unicorns and marshmallows. That's not me trying to be funny, being serious here. Now there's a third utility that is pretty badass. 
and I personally like it because it makes my life so much easier when I just want to change a little thing because I'm artsy fartsy. If I feel like, say, changing these arrows to slashes or unicorn horns or narwhal horns or bacon, I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Theme resource changer. I already have installed. I'm just going to show you the installer just for the sake of showing. When you install that bad boy, you go to your C Windows folder under resources, under themes. I already have themes injected in here. I just dumped all the themes, even though you should do just one at a one, one at a time. I didn't care. It's like all of them. Maybe I want to change the lighter theme, buddy. I use Ashtray. Yes, somebody was actually clever enough to know which one I was using. Bravo to you. I'll send you four internets. But what theme resource changer does for you, it adds these folders. You know, these folders can be put into any of the themes files. For example, shell32.dll, which is this bar here and this bar at the top. That's what these files are. You got your top and your side, and you can change it to whatever you want, however you want, and nonsense. Now, whenever you make a change to these folders, you do have to restart explorer.exe. Now, to do that, now to do that guy, I'm going to show you a shortcut in the command line. I know some of you people are going, but I don't know the command line. Don't worry, it's okay. I'm going to run the command line as an administrator. Now, when you're in the command line, we're going to type in task kill. It's my favorite utility since I was in IT, because I can do this remotely with PS Tools, which will be another video. Sometimes with that. Now, task kill will kill explore. Dead. Completely dead and stopped. Now, to run explore again, don't worry, everything's okay. Just type in explore.exe in the command line. Bam. That is. Every time you do any changes like that with those three folders in and any of your themes folder, whatever theme you're using, if you're changing these guys to see the change, you do need to restart explorer.exe. You have to. Otherwise, you won't see it. You could log out, you could restart, do whatever you want. The quickest way is just to kill and rerun explorer.exe. Easiest way to do it. Now, a little bit of explanation on these three folders and what they are. All right, explore.exe. That is, of course, the Windows shell that you're looking at. Explore.exe contains your start orbs. Yes, I will provide this start orb for anybody that wants it. The link will be in the description. Explore.frame.exe is all these little buttons on the top. You know, your backwards and your forwards, your recent pages your down arrow to see you know the previous folder whatever folder you were before to refresh it you know your search options that's what this is now shell32.dll is as already mentioned was a control panel one that's pretty straightforward you can make that anything you want you can put a pony in there if you want freaking pony now we're going to talk about the start orb nonsense which uh those of you who are keen will notice that my start button changed. Now I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. First off, there is a start button changer. When you're running theme resource changer, it might have issues because the way theme resource changer tells Windows to point to the resources folder and the theme and the explore.exe folder. Now if you're not using theme resource changer and you're just doing a few minor things, start button changer will work. It will work. Now there are three numbers. If you're using theme resource changer, three specific numbers, and I will explain to you why you need to know these numbers. Now, but first, I'm going to know my Windows directory, and we're going to go to explore.exe. Yes, you already see a couple backups because that's a start button changer. It just makes backups of everything. I make my own backups. It's neither here nor there. We're going to right click. On Explorer.exe. Now, when you install Resource Hacker, it installs a contextual menu object. Open using Resource Hacker. Now, when you look at Resource Hacker, it's a little window, you know, it's a little application, very handy for people that like to customize because you can change a lot of stuff in Windows. Now, if you open up Bitmap, this is your Bitmap group folder. Now, the three uh, numbers that you must remember and that are the only ones you have to change for the start orb, and this is the manual method. The old school method. If you don't use start orb changer or theme resource changer, this is the other way to do it. 
if you open up 6801 three buttons these are the bigified ones that I screwed up the sizes I fixed that later now the size exactly that you're gonna make this guy is it's a BMP file bitmap with dimensions of 54 by 162 pixels I repeat that's 54 pixels by 162 pixels the bitmap color death doesn't matter now the squares are each uh, they're 54 square 54 by 54 pixel squares each uh, the icon should fit actually not the whole 54 by 54 as I thought originally because the documentation is kind of spotty on this what works best from what I noticed is that if you keep it 30 by 30 kind of small if you have a detailed icon like the Razor World logo but it's so iconic that it doesn't matter now okay back to the numbers beard off there on a nice little tangent the three numbers it's gonna be in 6801 6805 and 6809 again 6801 6805 and 6809 those are the three that you have to replace with a bitmap if you do it the manual method. Now, if you're using Theme Resource Changer, we're going to go to the Resources folder. And we're going to go under Themes. And we're going to go to the theme that we're using. I'm using Borderless Ashtray. Go to Explore.exe. I already made a backup of the original icons. I have the PNGs here. Theme Resource Changer uses PNGs. Same dimensions as what I just mentioned 54 by 162 but it's a PNG with transparency that's the way you do that one and it's beautiful you make your icon you put them in there you have to name them exactly as you see 6801 6805 and 6809 bingo we have a winner sold now that's theme resource changer I love it because it's very quick to edit things yes it's using utility but no you're still doing things by hand now, there will be a link for all this stuff in the description. Now, another customization thing that most people don't see on my computer, because you will never see it unless you're here in front of me, or I'm going to provide you with some magic. Little thing I was curious, because I knew you could change the Windows logo, you know, the startup logo since Windows 3.1, but I've been doing that for years. I never bothered with Vista because I hated Vista. Got it for free. Who cares? Neither here nor there. Now for 7, I never bothered changing that startup logo because I barely ever see it. And why do I barely ever see it? Because I never shut down my PC unless I need to. Now I got curious when I got here and I was like, wait a minute, I could do something cool with this. Something really cool. And it's a little treat for you guys. Yes, it's a utility. But why would I use a utility instead of showing you the manual way? Because it's a big pain in the ass to do this by hand. Big pain in the ass. Now if you go under options, you see all these little guys? these six files get changed now to do it by hand I'm quite aware and probably sure that there's a lot of injecting and changing of hex code in this now why do I say this is the best one Because it's straightforward and pretty stupidly easy now under uh, animation if you choose animation you pick a folder you have to have your files rendered out as a sequence either out of After Effects Premiere whatever application you use you know Vegas whatever you use to do this with yeah look you can see my folders you're just gonna all you creepers are gonna just pause and look at what I have I don't care <laughs> have fun now in here I have a folder that I created as you can see now in this folder you just have to click select folder now it's already loaded in this thing so I'm not gonna do that but when you click select folder it has to have exactly 105 frames that being 0 to 105 yes you just saw a little preview of what it is for everybody else I'm just gonna click play well would you look at that isn't that pretty and it's gonna loop this little glowing thing forever these files will be provided in the description for you guys because you know what we love you guys you guys get this little treat for your windows I don't know how many of you guys shut down but whenever you install crazy amounts of video cards 
there you go. Now there's specific uh, settings for this guy, which uh, had to delve on the internet. It's 15 frames a second, and you can render them out as TIFFs, JPEGs, Targas, or PNGs, or BMPs. I do TIFFs because After Effects just screams at making the, t the, the TIFF render. Now the number you're looking for, by the way, if you're wondering, is it's 61 frames for the straight animation and the loop is the last 44 frames or 45 i did 101 and you can see there it goes to 61 then from 61 to 105 it's 104 here but there's 105 frames i guarantee you that guys because there's i always started zero 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 it's just what i do and that's what after effects does too Meh. Now the cool thing about this application is it's so dead easy to use and once you click apply, it applies it. That's it. Done. Now what I love about this application, now on my system it's already branded but you could do whatever you want. You could put it there or, you know, have fun. Knock yourself out. And message two is this guy here, starting windows. You can make it say, wind blows trout. And we can change that to any color you want. Let's just do fuck you pink. You know, that's a good call, right? Everybody loves fuck you pink. There you go. Just in your face. Now for the resuming logo. The resuming logo is only... Let me play it. It's only from that 61 to the 105 frames. Or 62 to 105. That's all there is to this application. Once, you know, you can do the same thing. You change the messages. You can tell it to have no messages. One message, which will just show the bottom branding. On my machine, it's branded techcinda.com. I don't know. There's a wizard that told me in my head to do that. That's what you get. Windows 7 Boot Updater. Now, the link for this application will be in the description as well. Now, for anybody that was pretty keen-eyed to notice, I don't have standard icons. There's a good reason for that. I'm sick and tired of looking at beige icons because I've been looking at them since 1996 when I got Windows 95. I was like, okay, you know, they're like, oh, cool, beige icons. And then myriad of myriad upon years later, you're just like, beige icons, why? Why haven't we moved on to gray folders? Oh, because that's a certain other company's colors or whatever. It's nonsense. Now, you only have to edit one file. Yes, you can use Icon Packager, as somebody's going to mention in the comments. You can use that. That does make it easy. I didn't like it doing it because I wanted to learn, and I want to teach you guys what that changes. Now, Icon Packager is the, well, not the better way to do it, but it's the simpler way, but you're not learning anything. So we're going to go and see Windows, and we're going to go to System32. Now we're going to be changing two files in System32 and SysWow64. System 32 is your 64-bit folder. Now, if you scroll down, you know, you go down to image res.dll. As you notice, I already have a backup file. Why do I have a backup? Because I've done this already. Now, when we scroll down to image res.dll, first thing you want to do is take ownership. Now, if you have the registry hack that does a little contextual, you could click that guy. But for, for the sake of, you know, just showing how it's done, you right-click, go to properties, security, advanced, owner you know you click edit choose the owner you want to make it i don't want to change the owner on this machine it's already done then you go to your security tab again click edit for the user of permissions now make sure your user has all the permissions set you do that for both files in system 32 and syswow 64 for image res.dll now we're going to right click again go to open using resource hacker now when you have resource hacker open with image res.dll you're going to click on icon group and open it now the four folders that we're going to change is number three number four number five and number six now when you double click it number three is your entire folder now don't worry about all these little guys you see the main one is this one that my mouse is circling around that's the main one when you right click and you go to replace resource, you see your folder. All you have to do is open file with new icon. And wherever your icon's located, you just select that icon. Now number four, 
is also your whole icon you want to change is this one because this is for the dynamic folders meaning the folders that have a thumbs.db file in there that file will show a little thumbnail guy in there now there's two other files to four you have five which is your back your back folder and six which is the front of the folder now it uses those three files to make a dynamic folder that you can actually see little thumbnail icon of what's in there now in here it's also the icons for the drives and all the file types and little standard file types on your system but I haven't found any good replacement file icons yet because everybody does Macified logos or Web 2.0 logos and I'm like that's too many gradients that's too many colors it's too bubbly it's too round I like simplicity I like monotone colors in my system hell even my XFC desktop on my old ass laptop is monochrome. Now to change the hard drive icon, which I'm not going to do because I haven't found any good ones yet, but the hard drive icons are located from 36 and they go on forever. If you keep going through these folders down, you'll see a myriad of icons for different hard drives. Now 36 is the default Windows system drive. 37 is your DVD drive. As you can see, little icon, DVD. Now, 38 is your DVD-R if it's in the drive. 39 would be DVD-RW or DVD-RAM. It goes on forever. There's even a zip drive in here, which cracked me up. There you go, guys. Zip drive. And seven. I don't believe the drivers exist. How about a tape drive? Yeah. Whatever. There you go. Got more tape backup options. Fun times. Just keep going down. You got printer icons. You can do this for any of the icons. It's pretty much that's all there is to it. Now, if you're thinking about changing your document, music, pictures, and video folder that's in the documents folder. Now, if you scroll in these one th to 1000, 1002, this is if you go to your, you know, I never go to this. This is in your libraries folder. I sometimes make a libraries, but it's useless to me because I'm power user and I do everything the old way the old way yes the old way but under 1002 that's your default documents icon 1004 it's your default music icon for that the library's icon 1003 default pictures and 1005 default pornos I mean movies yes movies all right guys after you've done your editing uh of image res.dll we're gonna to want to run the command prompt as an administrator make sure of that now first order of business in your command prompt is we want to run task kill we're gonna tell it to find the process of the explorer.exe we're gonna tell it to force kill that now we're gonna kill explorer.exe no longer running it's not there anymore so if you had any windows open or anything it's gonna kill them all now next order of business is Dell which is delete we're going to go tell it to delete this specific file and use your profile, app data, which is application data, and local. And we're going to go to icon cache.db. We're going to tell it to delete that file. Now, on my machine, it might not be there, it might be there, but you do this anytime you might have a corrupt file from, say, you've edited something, you've done something, icon packager, you know, other stuff. If you've changed any icon on the system and you have a corrupt looking icon, this will work. And this will usually fix it. Now it says could not find because I've done this before. Now to run explorer again, you just type in explorer.exe and press enter. And that will fix everything and everything will be happy. Alrighty guys, that is everything about customizing my Windows theme. Yes. Look at the startup glow, it glows green into white, into green, into white, and to gray. I uh, hope you guys uh, found this very informative. If not, expect to have pants banana pudding in the future happen to you. Expect it. <laughs>